Hey guys, what's up? So let us start our awesome course on environment and ecology. These are question number 1 to 10 and we will discuss rest 990 questions in the subsequent lessons. Consider the following levels of organization and ecology and select the options which represent the decreasing order of the levels according to their size. So first of all, you have the biosphere which is the biggest one. Then you have biome, then you have ecosystem, then you have community, then you have population and finally you have individual. So answer is C. Uh, so individuals is an organism, population is a group of organism, community is association of population of two or more species, ecosystem is complex interaction between community of living beings and the physical environment, biome is a very large geographical area of distinctive plants and animals groups which are adapted to the particular environment and finally biosphere is the part of the earth's crust that supports life. So please remember this order, it is very very important. Question number two. Autotrophs are the organism that derive nutrition from decaying organic matter that is saprotrophs. Okay, so first is wrong. Heterotrophs are organism that cannot manufacture its own food and derives its intake of nutrition uh, from mainly plants or animal matter that is correct. Saprotrophs uh, are the organism that derive from decaying or, uh, food and autotrophs are that can produce their own food. So answer is B that is two only. So autotrophs are organism that can produce their own food and heterotrophs cannot manufacture its own food and derives its intake of nutrition from plant or animal matter and saprotrophs are organisms that derive nutrition from decaying organic matter question number three which of the following are the abiotic components abiotic means dead so soil is dead water is dead air is dead humus is dead but plants is not dead so since fourth uh, is wrong the only option that can be correct is a or d so answer here is d so abiotic components are non-living chemical and physical parts of the environment that affect the living organisms and the functioning of ecosystem plants are living so they are not abiotic and humus is dark organic material uh, which is non-living and hence it is abiotic question number four which of the following statements given below is correct ecozones are characterized by the evolutionary history of organisms they contain that is correct biomes are not defined by historical or taxonomical similarity that is also correct so answer is c both one and two so ecozones are a method of dividing up the earth surface and each ecozone is a large area that contains a number of habitats which are linked by the evolutionary history of the animals and as such ecozone designations are used to indicate general groupings of organisms based on their shared biogeography and unlike ecozones biomes are not defined by genetic taxonomic or historical similarities and biomes are often identified with particular patterns of ecological succession and climate vegetation question number five an ecosystem is often much larger than a biome that is wrong biome is much larger than ecosystem a biome is made up of many similar ecosystems that is correct so answer is b2 only okay so bio ecosystem is much smaller than a biome question number six the structural and functional unit of a biosphere is so answer here is ecosystem so uh, just remember question number one and half of your doubts will be solved so ecosystem is the structural and functional unit of biosphere consisting of community of living beings and the abiotic component that is the physical environment question number seven Ecotone is a unique functional role or place of a species in an ecosystem that is wrong that is niche Niche is a zone of junction between two or more diverse ecosystems that is ecotone So they have reversed one and two here Ecozones are a method of dividing up the earth surface based on the evolutionary history of the animals and plants within them So that is correct. So answer here is uh, B that is three only So niche is a unique functional role or a place of a species in an ecosystem and ecotone is a zone of junction between two or more diverse ecosystem uh, question number eight it extends uh, over central and southern europe it consists of widely spaced trees it is generally the most productive agricultural areas of earth okay but a statement bol diya. it has abundant rainfall it cannot be tundra it cannot be taiga and uh, so answer here is b that is temperate deciduous forests so tundra is the northernmost region adjoining poles hence incorrect taiga is found in northern europe asia and north america hence option b is the answer which fits all the bill Question number 9, which of the following statement is correct? Lentic ecosystem has flowing waters like creeks, streams and rivers. This is wrong. Lentic has stagnant water. Lotic se yaad rakhna, lotta hai, lotta hai. So lotna means like here and there. So lotic has flowing waters like creeks, streams and rivers. Lentic has stagnant water like lakes and ponds. So first and second both are wrong. So answer is C3 only. Benthic zone is the lowest level of a body of water such as an ocean or a lake. So answer here is C3. Okay. So they have reversed the Atlantic and Lotic definitions. And last question for the day, which of the following statements about biosphere is true? It is absent at the extremes of North and South Pole. Uh, that is correct. 
the energy required for life within the biosphere comes from the sun so that is also correct living organisms are uniformly distributed that is wrong so answer here is a one and two so biosphere is basically that part of earth where life can exist and biosphere is absent at regions where extreme hostile conditions do not support life hence it is absent at extremes of both north and south poles and obviously living organisms are not uniformly distributed they are concentrated in tropics and they decrease as we go on either direction so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 11 to 20 in our course on environment and ecology and we will discuss thousand mcqs and it will cover all the important topics question number 11 which of the following statements about ecological pyramid is correct food producer forms the tip of the pyramid so that is wrong food producer forms the base of the pyramid the top carnivore forms the tip of the pyramid that is correct other consumer traffic levels are in between so that is also correct so answer here is d Okay, so first statement is wrong. Answer is D2 and 3. So in an ecological pyramid, food producer forms the base, top carnivore forms the tip and other consumer trophic levels are in between. Uh, question number 12, which of the following are correctly matched? Grassland ecosystem is an upright pyramid of numbers. That is correct. Pond ecosystem, inverted pyramid of numbers. Uh, that is wrong. Rather, parasitic ecosystem, inverted pyramid of numbers. That is correct. So answer here is uh, D1 and 3 only. So, pond ecosystem is an example of upright pyramid of numbers, whereas many aquatic ecosystems are examples of inverted pyramid of biomass. Uh, question number 13, the following statements are a characteristic of, it is used in order to overcome the shortcomings of pyramid of numbers. Individuals in each trophic level are weighted instead of being counted. Since they are talking about weight, so answer has to be pyramid of biomass and it is determined by measuring the dry weight of all organisms occupying such trophic level. So, answer here is B, pyramid of biomass. So, pyramid of productivity is also known as pyramid of energy, but dry weight is measured only while representing pyramid of biomass. Question number 14, which type of ecological pyramid is always upright? Answer here is pyramid of energy because of 10% law of, uh, okay, so that energy will always reduce from one trophic level to another. So, an energy pyramid reflects the conversion of solar energy to chemical energy at each trophic level and with loss of energy being depicted at each transfer to another trophic level. Hence, the pyramid is always upward with a large energy base at the bottom. Question number 15. Accumulation of non-biodegradable pesticides in food chain in increasing amount at each higher trophic level is known as. So, this is statement, it is called as biomagnification. This especially affects the birds, egg shells, especially of uh, eagle, etc. And they become very brittle because of DDT biomagnification. So, biomagnification is a tendency of the pollutants to concentrate as they move from one trophic level to the next. Thus, there is an increase in the concentration of a pollutant from lower level to higher trophic level. Question number 16. In order to, for biomagnification to occur, pollutant must be. So, it has to be long lived. So, that is correct. Immobile. Uh, that is not needed. Soluble in fat, biologically active. That is has to be there. Answer is D134. So, in order for, uh, it has to be mobile, not immobile. Okay. Question number 17, an inverted pyramid of biomass can be found in, in, in which ecosystem? An inverted pyramid of biomass is in marine ecosystem, let's say because blue whales etc are huge and planktons do not weigh much. So answer here is a marine ecosystem. So the pyramid of biomass assumes an inverted form in marine ecosystem because there are tiny phytoplanktons that grow and reproduce rapidly. Hence the base of the pyramid is small and the biomass of consumer at any instant exceeds uh, the biomass of producer. These are important concepts. Question number 18. Bioaccumulation refers to. So, it refers to how pollutants enter a food chain. So, answer here is A. So, bioaccumulation refers to the buildup of pollutants in the body of one organism, while biomagnification refers to the buildup in multiple organisms. In bioaccumulation, there is an increase in the concentration of a pollutant from the environment to the first organism in a food chain. And biomagnification also require movement up a food chain in order to occur while bioaccumulation does not require that the animal be eaten at all. Question number 19. What is the type of biotic interaction where one species is harmed and the other is unaffected? It is called as amencellism and it especially happens in some plants which secrete certain chemicals which is called as allelo. Okay. So allelopathy is the term which is used there. So, amencellism is a type of biotic interaction wherein one species is harmed, the other is unaffected and a small plant growing in the shade of a large tree is an example of amencellism. Here the large tree is unaffected where the small plants get negatively affected but it cannot because it cannot receive sufficient sunlight. 
and last question for today is commensalism and association between two species where basically one species is unaffected but the other species benefits so answer here is a it is exactly opposite of a mensalism so commensalism is a type of biotic interaction where one species benefits the other is unaffected for example cow dung provides food and shelter to dung beetles but the beetles have no effects on cows whatsoever so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 21 to 30 in environment and ecology question number 21 the symbiotic relationship between fungus and plant called mycorrhiza it helps in so basically mycorrhiza and fun like mycorrhiza is fungus and plant basically and uh, helps in absorption of water absorption of nutrients but not gases exchange so answer here is a one and two so myco here means fungus rhiza means roots and they form a network of fine filaments that associate with plant roots and draw nutrients and water from the soil that the root system would not be able to access otherwise. Question number 22. The process of decomposition is fastest in. So wherever there is high temperature, wherever there is more moisture and wherever there is more air, oxygen. So it will be there. So answer here is a tropical rainforest. So requirement for efficient decomposition includes aeration, oxygen moisture temperature 10 to 45 degrees celsius and uh, in alpine or antarctic region they have very low temperature and it does not support decomposition which of the following statements about ddt is correct it is an antibiotic this is wrong it is an antiseptic this is wrong it is a non-degradable pollutant that is correct so it is dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane so answer here is b3 only so it is a synthetic insecticide people used to kill it uh, mosquitoes also it is neat it is known to be very persistent in the environment and it will accumulate in fatty tissue and can travel long distance in the upper atmosphere as well it can go in birds through biomagnification it can make their shells brittle egg shells brittle which of these relate to the tundra biome permafrost spongy swamps rhododendrons so answer here is d123 so permafrost is the permanently frozen subsoil portion in the tundra region and when the upper ice cover melts during the summer, the subsoil still remains frozen. It is permanently frozen 12 months a day, 12 months a year, every day. And it results in spongy swarms. And the grass tundra consists of mosses, lichens, sedges, rhododendrons, etc. Question number 25. Study by the Terry, that is the Energy and Resource Institute, has found high levels of ozone in Delhi, which which shows that there is high level of pollutants like nitrogen oxide which interact with hydrocarbons in presence of sunlight to produce ozone so answer here is c so <clears throat> a study by terry has found high levels of ozone in delhi and it is because of the nitrogen oxide interacting with hydrocarbons in the presence of sunlight to produce ozone question number 26 a tight eye disease is related to so many people think it is mercury poisoning that is wrong that is mina mata disease Itaitai disease is because of cadmium poisoning. Lead poisoning is called as plumbism. So Itaitai disease was the first documented occurrence of mass cadmium poisoning in the world. And it literally translates to ouch ouch because of the painful screams of its victims. And Minamata disease is a neurological syndrome caused by severe mercury poisoning. Question number 27. There are some organic compounds found to be highly toxic to humans and are banned. These are called as persistent organic pollutants. It means... It means they are readily absorbed by plants and reach man through food chain. That is correct. Being fat soluble, their concentration increases many fold through the food web. That is correct. Being water soluble, no, they are not water soluble. Otherwise, they will be passed in urine. And these compounds cannot be broken down by plants or animals. So that is also correct. So answer is D124. So they have low solubility in water but easily captured by solid particles and are soluble in organic fluids like oils, fats and liquid fuels. Question number 28. Imagine you are in a region where evaporation exceeds precipitation and mean annual rainfall is below 100 mm. The region is a so it is a typical desert. Answer here is C. So deserts are regions where more water evaporates from the ground than is replaced by precipitation and they are generally extremely hot. Question number 29. Which among the following is a tertiary consumer? So primary consumer are called as herbivorous and uh, so deer, uh, wild boar, they can't be there. So answer here is the only one who fits the bill is tiger. And uh, tigers can eat secondary consumers like uh, wild boar etc. Wild boar can eat 
small herbivorous and herbivorous will eat your plants so answer here is a so primary consumer eat the producer they are called as herbivorous secondary consumers are carnivorous they are called as meat eaters because they eat the primary consumers and finally at the top of the food chain you have tertiary consumers they are also called as top predators and they will eat the primary and secondary consumer okay and last question is which of the following organism can act as primary consumer secondary consumer tertiary consumer or scavenger in different types of food chains answer here is a raven so raven can be a primary secondary tertiary consumer it consumes fruits and seeds directly from plants it eats other primary consumers like rats it also eats from the carcass of secondary consumers hence it is also a tertiary consumer or a scavenger so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so this is question number 31 to 14 environment and ecology so let's get started with this consider the following statements about ecological succession it is a directional change in vegetation that is correct it occurs on an ecological time scale that is also correct succession occurs when large scale destruction of communities caused by natural reasons that is correct succession does not occur when large scale destruction is caused by man made reason that is not correct so answer here is uh, c123 so it can be because of the natural reasons or man made it can be either natural or man made uh, question number 32 during ecological succession the first organism to colonize an area they are called as so basically they are called as the pioneers pioneers are the people who come for the first time for example lichens etc and it is made up of all the living organisms usually just a few species or even just one species that occupy an area undergoing primary succession in the beginning stages question number 33 in a terrestrial ecosystem hardwood trees are an example of so they are basically example of climax community basically they are the last one and unless there is some drastic change they are not going to be replaced so hardwood trees are the final stage of succession they are called as climax community shrubs softwood trees are considered successional stages which will eventually lead to replacement by hardwood trees over time question number 34 climax community is in a state of so they are in a state of basically equilibrium with the environment and succession will reach here a climax where they live in harmony with each other and it produces a stable community dominated by a small number of prominent species and this state of equilibrium is called as the climax community question number 35 consider the following statements about ecological succession primary succession occurs in area where a community that previously existed has been removed uh, that is wrong secondary succession occurs in essentially lifeless area so that is also wrong so answer is d neither one nor two they basically flipped it so primary succession occurs in essentially lifeless area there was no life whatsoever so for example regions in which the soil is incapable of sustaining life as a result of like such factors like lava flow newly formed sand dunes while secondary succession occurs in an area where a community that previously existed has been removed okay so answer here is d neither one nor two consider the following statements about secondary succession it occurs after complete or partial destruction of the existing community that is correct it is relatively slower as compared to primary succession that is wrong so answer here is a one only secondary succession will be faster as compared to primary succession because primary succession may need hundreds of years but secondary succession can happen in a few years or even some decades question number 37 when succession is brought about by living inhabitants of that community itself the process is called as so that process is called as auto auto means self genic means like you generated something so autogenic succession is when the succession is brought about by the living inhabitants of that community itself while change brought about by outside forces that is called as allogenic so autogenic means self allogenic means others and succession in which initially the green plants are much greater in quantity that is called as autotrophic succession and the ones in which heterotrophs dominate that is called as heterotrophic succession which of the following statement is correct enzymes responsible for nitrogenase action are very susceptible to destruction by oxygen for this reason many bacteria cease the production of enzyme in presence of oxygen nitrogen can be fixed by lightning converting nitrogen and oxygen to nox if there is oxygen in the air so statement is both are absolutely correct first is an example of biological nitrogen fixation and it occurs when atmospheric nitrogen is converted to ammonia by an enzyme called as nitrogenase while statement 2 is an example of non-biological nature wherein if there is lightning it leads to the fixing of nitrogen oxides 
which of the following processes or steps involved in water cycle operating in nature evaporation transpiration precipitation so answer here is c 1 2 3 photosynthesis is not a process which is involved in water cycle operation just remember that so it includes evaporation and condensation precipitation and transpiration and last question is azoto vector atmospheric nitrogen into ammonium nitrous monoxide nitro vector so answer here is d123 uh, so all three organisms are correctly matched so azoto vector basically converts atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia nitrosomonas converts ammonia into nitrite and nitro vector converts nitrite into nitrate so answer is d123 and they are very very important part of nitrogen cycle so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 41 to 50 and this is environment and ecology mcqs Question number one, uh, 41, which of the following is an abiotic component of an ecosystem? A means non-biotic means living. It's primary producer, decomposer, carnivorous, all are living, but sunlight is not living. So all of them are living except sunlight. Question number 42, consider the following organisms, earthworm, carrion beetle, pseudomonas, slime molds. Which of the following are detritivorous? So detritivorous is basically who eats on breakdown, dead or decaying organism. So earthworm is definitely there. Even carrion beetle is there, but pseudomonas, these are bacteria, okay so they are like they are they will not be counted in detritivorous so answer here is a one and two so decomposers are organisms that break down or decaying organisms it is a general term while detritivorous are one of the classification and they break down the dead organisms through the decomposition but detritivorous consume the decaying organisms okay and uh, earthworms and carrion beetle are detritivorous it means they consume the decaying organisms but decomposers merely break down them while pseudomonas and slime molds are decomposers okay they do not consume them a community in ecology is defined as so basically first you have individual then you have species then you have population population and species are same then if you have more populations then it is called as community so an assemblage or association of population of two or more different species occupying the same geographical area and in a particular time so that is called as uh, a community so an assemblage or association of population a is basically organism b refers to population and d refers to an ecosystem so you should know these terms properly question 44 in a terrestrial ecosystem the trophic level that would contain the largest biomass would be the so answer here is producers so producers will have the largest biomass okay so energy from the sun is transferred through the ecosystem by passing through various trophic levels and roughly 10 percent of the energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next so that is also very important and there must be higher amount of biomass at the bottom of the pyramid to support the energy and biomass requirements at the higher trophic levels and the bottom of the pyramid represents the producers or autotrophs the use of living organisms to remove or neutralize pollutants from a contaminated site is known as that is called as bioremediation so use of living organisms is phytoremediation is basically use of living green plants or in situ or in place removal degradation uh, containment of soils in sludges, sediments, surface water, groundwater, etc. So that is the bioremediation. Question number 46. The state where a body of water requires high concentration of nutrients, especially phosphates and nitrates, is called as? So that is basically eutrophication. It happens with lakes and ponds. So it is caused by leaching of phosphate and nitrate containing fertilizers from agricultural lands into lakes and water. And the thermal stratification of lake refers to a change in the temperature at different depths in the lake and is due to the change in water's density with temperature and thermocline is a thin but distant layer in a large body of fluid in which temperature changes more rapidly with depth than it does in the layers above or below and the aplimnion or surface lake is the topmost layer in a thermally stratified lake occurring above the deeper hypolimnion question number 47 which of the following are the effects of eutrophication you have decreased biodiversity you have new species invasion you have increase in toxicity all of these are effects so eutrophication eventually results in decreased biodiversity because algal bloom will restrict the sunlight penetration and it will cause death of the plants it will lead to death of all the living organisms and it can shift the species composition of the ecosystem and some releases neuro and hepatotoxins when dead or eaten they can kill aquatic organisms what will happen if the wolf is removed from the food chain given below so basically the population of deer will increase obviously so wolf is a predator which feeds on deer when the predator is present the deer population is controlled if you remove them uh, they will uh, turn increase and they will might decrease the population of vegetation which of the following are examples of marine mammals polar bear yes to a certain extent you can say dolphins whales walrus so definitely yes 
आंसर एयर इज डी वन टू थ्री फोर सो सिटेशियंस आर बेसिकली दिस पेंट देयर होल लाइज इन वाटर इट इंक्लूड्स वेल्स डॉल्फिनस पॉर्पॉइज पिनीपीड्स इंक्लूड्स दे यूज स्लीपर्स फॉर मोमेंट ऑन लैंड लाइक सील्स सी लॉयस वॉल्ट्रसिस साइरेनियंस इंक्लूड्स ड्यूगोंग विच इज सी काउ एंड मैनिटीज एंड स्लो एंड पैसे मैमल्स एंड मेरीन हैव हैव सेपरेट टोस एंड पोलर बियर्स एंड सी ऑटर्स आर कंसिडर्ड मेरीन मैमल्स बिकॉज दे डिपेंड ऑन द ओशन फॉर देयर फूड एंड हैबिटाट and question number 15 an aquatic ecosystem the organism found living in the bottom of water mass is known as answer is benthos so benthic and nectons which are swimmers and they range in size from insects to large mammals like blue whale and periphyton are the organism which remain attached to stems and the leaves of rooted plants or substance emerging from the bottom mud so this is very very important these concepts and we'll continue in the next lesson thank you Hey guys, what's up? So we continue our course on environment and ecology, and I'll try to make thousand MCQs in this. And by the time we're done with this course, you don't need to read any book whatsoever. So the best possible way to learn, according to science, is to learn in the question and answer format. This is this is the way you fa- gra- grasp the fastest. Which of the following states is home to the most number of tigers in the country? It is a very typical question which is asked because tiger is the national animal of India so answer here is Karnataka so Karnataka has the highest number of tigers in country and it is around 406 followed by 314 in Uttarakhand and 308 in Madhya Pradesh and currently we have around 2300 tigers and it is an increase of 30% from the last count just remember that roughly we have 2.5000 tigers in India uh, consider the following characteristics of a bird century It is the oldest bird century in India. Since they are talking about oldest bird century, everybody should know the answer. It is located in the state of Tamil Nadu, so it cannot be Bharatpur bird century, right? Garganeri teals, glossy bills, grey heron, grey pelican, open-billed stork are some of the species of uh, uh, birds found here. So answer here is basically it is the Vedan Thangal bird century. It was established in 1936. It is the oldest water bird century in India. It is located in the state of Tamil Nadu. and uh, it is the only option which is located in the state of tamil nadu rest all three are not even located there which of the following are ozone's precursor see ozone in stratosphere is good because it will save us from ultraviolet rays which is harmful can cause cancer but ozone in troposphere is bad it is a pollutant and it will kill you so it is a double edged sword so uh, here for the ozone precursors uh nox carbon monoxide vocs they are called as ozone precursors so majority of the tropospheric ozone formation occurs when nitrogen oxides carbon monoxide and volatile organic compounds they react in the presence of sunlight so here answer is 1 to 4 and sulfur dioxide is not there consider the following statements about red algae they absorb red light to photosynthesize they live in deep sea water answer here is b2 only red algae will absorb blue light right and they will reflect red light and it can penetrate into greater depths they are red because of the presence of the pigment phycoerythrin and this pigment reflects red light so any object which looks uh, let's say green so it will reflect green light that is why it looks green and so here it will reflect red light so that's why it will look red and because blue light penetrates water to a greater depth than light of a longer wavelength these pigments allow the red algae to photosynthesize and live at greater depths than most other algae Consider the following type of forest: hilltop forest, cloud forest, reed forest, forest fringing river system. Which of the following are referred as riparian ecosystem? So answer here is four. So riparian areas are ecosystems that are occur along the water courses or water bodies. So here the only one that fits the bill is forests fringing river systems, and they are distinctly different from the surrounding lands because of the unique soil and vegetation characteristics that are strongly influenced by free or unbound water in the soil. and they occupy the transitional areas between the terrestrial and aquatic ecosystem and some examples include flood plains stream banks lake shores etc select the correct statement from the options given below which describes bio leaching so here when we talk about bio leaching so answer here is microorganisms are used to extract metals from the low grade ores so here answer becomes a so here uh bio leaching leaching is a phenomenon in which something is getting separated for example leaching of minerals happens when they go from the soil to the bottom 
so here it is the process of using bacteria to dissolve metals instead of chemical solutions and it has been used to dissolve metals such as nickel copper zinc cobalt gold lead arsenic and they works by using specific bacteria that can essentially eat the metal content out of core uh, consider the following characteristics of a national park it lies between the confluence of banas and chambal river okay the protected forest is also famous for their large banyan trees and enshrines a medieval fort it is one of the most uh, one of the project tiger reserves and consists mostly of deciduous forest answer here is ranthambhor national park and uh, ranthambhor national park is in savai madhopur district of rajasthan it lies between the confluence of banas and chambal river it has enshrines a medieval fort and it has tiger hyena sloth bear cheetah or some other rare species found here asiatic lions are found in which of the following so answer here is gir national park everybody knows about it so sasan gir national park located in gujarat is famous for its thriving population of the asiatic lion and lion is not found in in the other national parks here which of the following river has the largest river basin in india so in india is the question answer is a ganga so ganga basin is the largest river basin in india in terms of catchment area and it constitutes of 26% of the country's land mass and about 79% area of ganga basin is in india and it also extends to other countries okay like bangladesh etc and the basin covers 11 states uttarakhand up mp rajasthan haryana himachal chatisgarh jharkhand bihar west bengal and delhi and asia's largest inland salt water lagoon and world's largest breeding ground for flamingos herons uh, white bellied sea eagles etc is located in so answer here is chilika lake bird sanctuary it is in odisha and it is asia's largest inland salt water lagoon so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss question number 61 to 70 of environment and ecology and uh, many of you have already watched this course and thousands of you have already enrolled so let's get started study of rearing honeybees is called as that is basically called as apiculture so there is no doubt about it and this is a very common question that they ask horticulture is related to vegetables fruits etc basically not traditional agriculture and pisciculture is related to fishes okay so apiculture is the study of rearing honeybees horticulture is when you do not do traditional so you can do it for ornamental plants flowers vegetables fruits that is called as horticulture pisciculture is basically study of rearing fishes pisces is a term which is used for fishes Question number 62 the use of diclofenac drug resulted in reduction of population of which one of the following birds so diclofenac bahut hi is a very common drug which we use it is called as boilini and we use it as a painkiller and uh, so vultures they can't process it their kidney fail because of this so answer is a vultures so use of the drug diclofenac uh, and uh, used in the treatment of livestock has been linked to the collapse of vulture population throughout south asia and unlike ddt diclofenac does not accumulate in the tissues of livestock or birds but for vultures it is a poison okay question number 63 which of the following uh, animals is our example or keystone species so keystone species some if you remove them it create a chaos complete utter chaos in the ecosystem sea otters in pacific northwest yes this is absolutely correct elephants in sargenti plains correct monkeys in western ghats if you remove monkeys in western ghats nothing will happen answer is a one and two so keystone species is a plant or animal that plays a unique and crucial role in which the ecosystem functions for example you can have a fig plant ecosystem if you remove the fig plant then the entire ecosystem will collapse and without keystone species the ecosystem would be dramatically different or it may cease to exist altogether and monkeys in western ghats they are not an example of keystone species species with restricted geographical distribution over relatively small range they are called as basically they are called as endemic species so answer here is c so endemism is the ecological state of a species being unique to a defined geographic location such as an island nation country or other defined zone or habitat type an endangered species which has been categorized by the IUCN red list as likely to become extinct and threatened species are any species which are vulnerable to endangerment in the near future question number 65 which of the following bird is an extinct bird of mauritius island answer is dodo everybody must know about it so when human before humans went there on 15th century everything was fine but uh, once the human landed there they just ate it up completely destroyed it so dodo raphus cuculatus is an extinct flightless bird that was endemic to the island of mauritius east of madagascar in the indian ocean 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी सिक्स कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ अ नेशनल पार्क इट इज़ लोकेटेड इन द ग्रेट निकोबार आइलैंड ऑफ इंडिया सो ऑब्वियसली इट कांड भी भरतपुर नेशनल पार्क ओके इट हैज़ टू बी कैम्प बेल भी नेशनल पार्क बिकॉज दुधवा नेशनल पार्क इज नॉट लोकेटेड इन अंडमान दिस नेशनल पार्क सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम गलाथिया नेशनल पार्क बाय वाइड फॉरेस्ट बफर जोन इट इज कवर्ड बाय ट्रॉपिकल एवरग्रीन फॉरेस्ट एंड मैंग्रोव्स आंसर इज ए कैम्बेल बे सो इट इज जोग्राफिकल सिटी इन द ग्रेट निकोबार आइलैंड द लार्जेस्ट ऑफ द निकोबार आइलैंड एंड दीज निकोबार आइलैंड आर इन द ईस्टर्न इंडियन ओशन दिस इज सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम द गलाथिया नेशनल पार्क बाय ट्वेल्व किलोमीटर वाइड फॉरेस्ट बफर जोन एंड दिस इज कवर्ड बाय ट्रॉपिकल एवरग्रीन फॉरेस्ट मैंग्रोव्स एंड दूधवा नेशनल पार्क एंड भरतपुर नेशनल पार्क आर नॉट लोकेटेड इन द अंडमान आइलैंड्स क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी सेवन एमेजॉन रेन फॉरेस्ट इज नोन एज सिंस दे प्रोड्यूस सो मच ऑक्सीजन सो दे कांड भी हार्ड दे कांड भी लिवर दे आर कॉल इज द लंग्स ऑफ द प्लानट अर्थ सो एमेजॉन रेन फॉरेस्ट फंक्शन एज अ जाइंट एयर मशीन दैट एब्जॉर्ब्स अ लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड प्रोड्यूस ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ ऑक्सीजन सो दैट इज वाई दे आर कॉल इज लंग्स ऑफ द प्लानट अर्थ एंड वी शुड अवॉइड कटिंग दैम क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी एट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग एनिमल्स आर रेप्टाइल स्नेक डेफिनेटली अस टर्टल इज ऑल्सो स्ट्रेप्टाइल इज आर डायनासोर ऑल दीज आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ रेप्टाइल्स आंसर इज डी वन टू थ्री फोर क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी नाइन ऑफ दीज क्वेश्चन आर वेरी टिपिकल डाची गम वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरीज इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर दैट इज करेक्ट जिम कॉर्बेट नेशनल पार्क इज इन उत्तराखंड दैट इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट मानस वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी इज इन असाम सो दिस इज रॉन्ग एंड रन थमोर नेशनल पार्क इट इज जस्ट फाइव आर्स अवे फ्रॉम माई हाउस इन जयपुर आई हैव बिन देयर इन टेंथ क्लास सी इन इट इन साइड आउट so it is in sawai madhavpur district so ranthambore national park is in rajasthan so answer is c one and two only and ranthambore is very famous for tigers by the way question number 70 when a keystone species is removed from a habitat uh, the habitat is dramatically changed all the other species are affected some species may disappear or even become extinct all these are absolutely correct answer is d all of the above so a keystone species is an organism that helps define an entire ecosystem and when that species is removed the habitat dramatically changes some species are extinct also because of that can get extinct so thank you for watching this lesson hey guys what's up so let us discuss environment and ecology mcqs question 71 to 80 mina mata disease is a neurological syndrome caused by severe so answer here is a mercury poisoning so it is a very common condition if you have a mercury poisoning the condition as such is not common but in a city called mina mata in japan it was widespread some time ago So, large plastic plant located near the Minamata Bay used a mercury-containing compound in a reaction to provide vinyl chloride, and the leftover mercury was dumped into a bay. And uh, basically, microorganism at the bottom of the bay converted into organic form. And when the people eat fishes or seafood, and uh, they can can kill people, and uh, that's called the Minamata disease. Question number seventy-two: Which of the following are correctly matched? Aerosol is particle suspended in air. That is correct. Fog is aerosol consisting of water droplet. Correct. Mixture of smoke and fog is called as smog. So that is also correct. Answer is D. One, two, three. Question number seventy-three. Every year at Gahir Matha Beach in Odisha coast, hundreds of thousands of olive ridley turtles congregate on the beach between December and April for mass nesting. After its discovery in nineteen seventy-four, it was notified as a sanctuary. What is the name of the sanctuary? So answer here is B. Better करने का uh, sanctuary. So it was in 1974 that it was declared. Question number 74: The conservation and maintenance of samples of living organisms inside their natural habitat is called as in situ. Outside is ex situ. It is very simple. So answer is ex situ. Ex situ where can you do? You can do in zoological gardens. You can do it in botanical gardens. Zoo, which is called that. Then you can have DNA storage, slow growth storage, captive breeding, seed storage. All these are examples. Okay. So when you take out outside their natural habitat, that is, they are not in wildlife sanctuary, national park, or sacred groves. Question number seventy-five: Which of the following are example of in situ conservation? I just told you all of them right now. That wildlife sanctuary, national park, all these are example of uh, in situ conservation. Then biosphere reserves, sacred groves. So answer will be uh, even gene sanctuaries to a certain extent. Because it is an in situ form of conservation, so answer is C one two three four. So gene sanctuary is an area where plants are conserved. It includes both biosphere reserve as a national park and gene bank is totally different. It is a biological laboratory. So Ramsar Convention is an international treaty. Everybody should know that uh, it is a place in Iran, Ramsar, Iran, and it is related to wetlands. So answer is A. So Ramsar Convention on wetlands of international importance. 
is an international treaty for conservation and sustainable use of wetlands it is also known as convention on wetlands and it is named after the city of ramsar in iran where the convention was signed in the year 1971 question number 77 the area of biosphere and which is protected entirely without any experimentation and research and no biotic interference is known as that is basically called as the core zone so apart from that there is a buffer zone which is like surrounding the core zone so it is like a three layer so in innermost is the buffer zone then you have outside you have the uh, so innermost is core zone outside your buffer zone and the most outdoor one is transition zone the transition zone is basically every all the activities happen here settlements crop plants manage growth everything is going on there buffer zone is between transition and core zone that is what is called as buffer zone and activities here are restricted limited recreation limited tourism limited fishing grazing which are permitted to reduce its effect on the core zone Question number seventy-eight. Identify the lake based on the following characteristics. It is India's largest inland salt lake. Answer is basically Sambar Lake, and it is very close to Jaipur city. And while I was in sixth class, we went there for our picnic, and it has been designated as a Ramsar site. That is correct. So answer here is Sambar Salt Lake. It is India's largest inland salt lake. It is a Ramsar site, recognized wetland of international importance because the wetland is a key wintering area for tens of thousands of flamingos and other birds. that migrate from northern asia question number 79 which of the following are correctly matched chipko movement sundarlal bhavana is correct narmada bada andolan meda patkar that is correct silent spring basically is a book written by rachel carlson al gore is vice president of united states and he got more votes than george bush but unfortunately lost so answer is c1 and 2 silent spring is an environmental science book by rachel carlson and the book documented the adverse effect on the environment because of the indiscriminate use of pesticides particularly ddt an area of land saturated with water is known as wetland so a wetland is an area that is saturated with water and many wetlands are transitional zones between upland and aquatic ecosystems and watershed is an area that separates water flowing to different rivers basins or seas and a check dam is a small sometimes temporary dam constructed across a soil drainage ditch etc so thank you for watching this lesson Hey guys, what's up? So let us discuss question number eighty-one to ninety in this environment and ecology course. Which of the following are considered as wetlands? So estuary, river, lake, mangroves. All these are example of wetlands. Wetland is a place where the land is covered by water, usually saturated, either salt or fresh. There can be two types, and uh, depending on this, otherwise there can be five types. So marine, which is ocean; estuary, which is estuary; riverine, which is river; lacustrine, which is lake; and palustrine, which is marsh. Common land for common names for wetlands include marshes, estuaries, mangroves, mud flats, mires, ponds, fens, swamps, deltas, coral reefs, billabong, lagoons, shallow seas, bogs, lakes, and flood plains. Okay. Question number eighty-two. The objective of Operation Kachappa is to basically conserve olive ridley turtles. So Operation Kachappa is a conservation effort being coordinated by Wildlife Protection Society of India, Delhi, and Wildlife Society of Odisha. And uh, Operation Turtle program has launched a variety of measures. To basically, spread awareness as well as taking direct action to prevent the death of the turtles, and it conducts a large number of awareness programs for fisher folk in the area. And these include mobile exhibitions, volunteers visiting fishing villages to spread the message of turtle conservation through songs, skits, and paintings. What is the common to the technique in vitro fertilization, cryo preservation, and tissue culture? Uh, all of them are ex situ. In situ basically means in the location of the कहाँ मिलेगा लॉयन आपको लॉयन विल बी फाउंड इन द विलेज नो लॉयन विल फाउंड इन द फॉरेस्ट राइट सो इफ यू कंजर्व हिम इन अ वाइल्ड लाइफ पार्क बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व नेशनल पार्क और वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी और अ सेक्रेट ग्रोव देन दे आर इन सी टू इफ यू प्रिजर्व दैम इन जूलॉजिकल पार्क बॉटेनिकल पार्क फर्टिलाइजेशन क्राइव प्रिजर्वेशन टिशू कल्चर दे आर एक्स सी टू सो आई थिंक आई एक्सप्लेन इट वेरी क्लियरली क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी फोर विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज आर करेक्ट लीगली बाइंडिंग कमिटमेंट ऑन द पार्ट ऑफ द डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज टू रिड्यूस कार्बन एमिशन ऑफ प्रोवाइडेड इन द क्योटो प्रोटोकॉल दैट इज करेक्ट द लीगली बाइंडिंग कमिटमेंट्स और रिड्यूस टू एन एग्रीमेंट इन कैंकन कॉन्फ्रेंस दैट इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट सो क्योटो प्रोटोकॉल इज एन इंटरनेशनल ट्रिटी विच एक्सटेंड नाइन नाइनटी टू यून एफ ट्रिपल सी दैट कमिट्स स्टेट पार्टीज टू रिड्यूस ग्रीन हाउस गैस एमिशन बेस्ड ऑन द प्रमाइज दट ग्लोबल वार्मिंग एक्जिस्ट एंड मैन मेड एंथ्रोपोजेनिक सी ओ टू एमिशन सब कॉस्ड इट एंड With the first commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol to end in 2002, 12 many 
कंट्रीज वॉन्टेड इट टू बी रीज इन कैंकन बट इट डिड नॉट रीच कैंकन इज इन मैक्सिको क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी फाइव विच आर द फॉलोइंग प्लेसेज ऑफ कोरल रीफ फॉर्मेशन पार्क बे गल्फ ऑफ मन्नार गल्फ ऑफ कच्छ अंडमान एंड निकोबार आइलैंड लक्षदीप आइलैंड सो आंसर इज वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव ऑल ऑफ दीज हैव कोरल रीफ फॉर्मेशन ओके एंड दे हैव डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ रीफ सो डू रीड इट अबाउट हेयर क्वेटो क्रोट कन्वेंशन और प्रोटोकॉल इज कंसर्न विद बेसिकली इट इज कंसर्न विद क्लाइमेट चेंज एवरीबडी नोज अबाउट इट सो क्यूटो प्रोटोकॉल इज एन इंटरनेशनल एग्रीमेंट लिंक टू एन एफ ट्रिपल सी विच कमिट्स एस पार्टीज बाई सेटलिंग इंटरनेशनल बाइंडिंग एमिशंस डिग्री ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी इंक्रीज फ्रॉम ऑलवेज ऑलवेज इट विल इंक्रीज टूवर्ड्स इक्वेटर इक्वेटर विल हैव हाइएस्ट मैक्सिम बायोडाइवर्सिटी बिकॉज ऑफ ट्रॉपिकल रेन फॉरेस्ट अबंडेंस एंड लाइट अबंडेंस वाटर सो इट विल बी फ्रॉम पोल्स टू इक्वेटर सो इफ यू गो अप then the biodiversity will reduce if you go north or southwards then the biodiversity will reduce from equator so biodiversity typically measures variation in the genetic species and ecosystem level tends to be near at the great equator and sea level if you go up or down then it will decrease if you go north or south it will decrease so whereas the extreme temperature weather condition has pole resulted in few species of plants and animals inhabiting it consider the following statements it is set aside for the protection and conservation of outstanding natural fauna flora जियोलॉजिकल फॉर्मेशन एंड नेचुरल सीनिक ओके हंटिंग किलिंग और कैप्चरिंग ऑफ फॉन आउट डिप्रोशन ऑफ एली वाइल्ड लाइफ एनी मदर विच एपिटर आउट डिस्ट्रक्शन एंड वेपन्स आर ऑल प्रोहिबिटेड ओके ग्रेजिंग ऑफ एनी लाइफ स्टॉक शेल नॉट बी परमिटेड सो विच विच डिस्क्राइब्स द बेस्ट सो इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस इट इज टिपिकल डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ नेशनल पार्क इन बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व देर विल बी सम एरियाज फॉर ह्यूमन बींग्स ऑल्सो सो ग्रेजिंग विल बी अलाउड इन सम पार्ट इट कैनॉट बी बायोस्फे रिजर्व टाइगर रिजर्व डज नॉट मेक एनी सेंस सो इट इज अ बेसिकली क्वेश्चन इट इन नेशनल पार्क एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी बट वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी समथिंग डिफरेंट इट जस्ट डिनोट्स एन एरिया विच इज सेट असाइड फॉर द कंजर्वेशन प्रोटेक्शन एंड मैनेजमेंट ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ इट इन डेबिटार्ट बायोस्फे रिजर्व ऑलरेडी टोल डू इट इंप्रूवमेंट ऑफ रिलेशन बिटवीन मैन एंड एनवायरमेंट एंड इट इज वेरी बिग टाइगर रिजर्व इज टोटली डिफरेंट बॉल गेम ऑल टूगेदर क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी नाइन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग फूड चेन फ्रॉम अ लेक इको सिस्टम वाइट ऑफ लैंगटॉन स्मॉल स्नेल स्टिकल बैक फिश किंग फिशर बर्ड If the lake ecosystem is polluted with pesticides, which one of the following will contain the maximum amount of pesticides? Kingfisher bird is the answer because it is biomagnification. Their eggs will be brittle because of calcium formation will be upset and then can lead to death of their chicks before they hatch. Okay, so that is the phenomenon is called as biomagnification, where the concentration increases higher up the food chain. It happens with DDT also. Which of the following biosphere reserve of India is are part of the World Network of Biosphere Reserves based on the UNESCO Man and Biosphere Program? Nokrek Biosphere Reserve for sure. Sundarban Biosphere Reserve is also there. Uh, Panchamadi Biosphere Reserve is also there. Manas is not there. Ten of the eighteen biosphere reserves are there. So what are these ten? Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve in Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka. Gulf of Mannar Biosphere is in Tamil Nadu. Sundarban Biosphere Reserve in West Bengal. Nanda Devi is in Uttarakhand. Nokrek is in Meghalaya. पंचमढ़ी इज इन एम पी सिमली पाल इज इन ओडिशा अचानक मार अमर कंटक इज इन छत्तीसगढ़ एंड मध्य प्रदेश ग्रेट निकोबार इज इन अंडमान एंड निकोबार आइलैंड एंड अगस्त मल बायोस्वे रिजर्व इन केरला एंड तमिलनाडु सो थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग दिस लेसन ठीक है इज व्हाट्सअप सो लेट अस डिस्कस क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन्टी वन टू हंड्रेड ओके एंड इट इज एनवायरमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी आइडेंटिफाई द नेशनल पार्क यूजिंग द फॉलोइंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स इट इज द ओनली नेशनल पार्क फ्लोटिंग नेशनल पार्क इन द वर्ल्ड आंसर इज कीबल लमजा नेशनल पार्क देर इज नो अदर फ्लोटिंग नेशनल पार्क इट इज एन इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ लोक तक लेक इट इज एन रिफ्यूज फॉर द इंडिजिनस एंग आइडियर एंड इट इज प्रेजेंट नॉर्थ ईस्ट इंडिया इन द स्टेट ऑफ मणिपुर इन द डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ बिश्नेपुर एनी थिंग एल्स यू नीड सो आफ्टर दिस लेसन यू डोंट नीड टू रन लैंड एनी थिंग कीबल लमजा नेशनल पार्क इज इन बिश्नोपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ स्टेट ऑफ मणिपुर इन इंडिया इट इज द ओनली फ्लोटिंग नेशनल पार्क इन द एंटायर वर्ल्ड इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ द लोक तक लेक एंड इट इज होम टू द इंडेंजर्ड संग आइडियर क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी टू विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर करेक्टली मैस्ड गोल्डन लंगूर तो दैट इज एंडेंजर्ड ब्लैक बॉक इज लीस्ट कंसर्न गॉर इज क्रिटिकली एंडेंजर्ड दिस इज रॉन्ग गॉर इज लिस्टेड एज वलनरेबल आंसर इज ए वन एंड टू इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड इज इंडियन बाइसन क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन्टी थ्री इन रिसेंट सेंसेस कंडक्टेड फॉर डी ईयर स्पीसीज इट वॉज फाउंड दैट देर वॉज नाइन्टी परसेंट रिडक्शन इन पॉपुलेशन ओवर द लास्ट टेन ईयर्स देर वॉज जस्ट फोर्टी एट मेच्योर इंडिविजुअल्स ऑफ द स्पीसी लेफ्ट and as you show there is 50% probability for extinction in wild so it is typically critically endangered so uh, in for a suspected population size reduction of more than 90% over 10 years or three generations population size is less than 250 mature individuals and if at least 50% uh, extinction chances there within 10 years or three generation then it is critically endangered okay 
basically it is a very very high risk of extinction in the wild is going on which ecosystem has the following characteristics they have nematophores if you see the word nematophore answer has to be mangroves blind roots and they have to overcome respiration problem in the anaerobic soil condition they exhibit viviparity mode of reproduction that is seeds germinate in the tree itself before falling to the ground so answer here is a mangroves so it has anaerobic soil conditions and saline water hence to overcome these problems plants have adapted by producing nematophores and germinating seeds in the tree itself question number 95 consider the following statements sumatran rhinoceros malabar civet and andaman white toothed shrew all these are critically endangered so answer is d123 so apart from that it's pygmy hawk condana rat large rock rat or elvira rat namdafa flying squirrel sumatran rhinoceros malabar civet and andaman white toothed shrew Question number ninety-six. Which one of the following animals is locally extinct in India? Asiatic lions can be found in Gujarat. Indian elephant can be found in Rajasthan, Kerala, everywhere. Indian leopard is also present in a few states, but Asiatic cheetah is gone in India. So Asiatic cheetah is Equinix jubatus venaticus. It once ranged over the grasslands of India, Pakistan, Russia, Iran, and Middle East. It became because like excessive hunting of Britishers wiped it out, and princes of princely states complete wiped out. habitat destruction scarcity of prey species so that's why unfortunately the fastest mammal is not there in india the register of wetland sites on the list of wetlands of international importance where changes in ecological character have occurred are occurring or likely to occur as a result of technological developments pollution or other human interference is known as that is montreal record The Red Deer Book is a type of a public document created and maintained by IUCN. Okay, it is for like threatened species and endangered species. And transboundary Ramsar sites are those wetlands that are ecologically coherent but extends ac- across national boundary. For example, it can be between India and Pakistan, India and Nepal, US, Canada. Which of the following statements are are correct? The Earth Summit was held in Rio de Janeiro in June nineteen ninety two. That is correct. It is also known as IUCN. Yeah, UCN is completely different organization. Answer is A one only. So, on uh, UNCED United Nations Conference on Environment and Development is also called as Rio or Summit, Rio Conference or Summit, Rio de Janeiro or Summit. It led to adoption of Agenda Twenty One, which is a wide-ranging blueprint for action to achieve sustainable development worldwide. Question number ninety-nine: Which of the following pairs are correctly matched? Our summit is in Brazil. That is correct. Rio de Janeiro is in Brazil. Montreal Protocol, Canada. That is also correct. Cancun Agreement is in Mexico. It is not in Japan. So answer here is one and two. So I have already covered Rio. Montreal Protocol is sustainable substance that depletes the ozone layer. It is basically for ozone depleting substance. It is considered one of the most successful international treaty. And Cancun Agreement is for long term challenge of climate change. Cancun is a city in Mexico or Mexico. Hundredth question. So we are one tenth here. I promised thousand MCQs and ten percent of is done. Sustainable development was defined as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. In current land report, it was in nineteen eighty seven. That is thirty years ago. It was developed by former Norwegian Prime Minister, and it is titled Our Common Future, and uh, it was a result of World Commission on Environment and Development, and Montreal Record. Is a register of wetland sites where changes in ecological character has occurred. Or Silent Spring is an environmental book by Rachel Carlson. So thank you for watching this lesson.